1983, a team of deeply pious scientists conducted a radical experiment in an undisclosed facility somewhere in the East. The scientists had theorized that a human without any access to any senses or any other ways to perceive stimuli would be able to perceive the presence of God. They believed that the five senses clouded our awareness of eternity, and without them, a human could actually establish contact with God by thought. An elderly man who claimed he had nothing left to live for was the only test subject to volunteer. To purge him of all of his senses, the scientists performed a complex operation in which every sensory nerve connected to the brain was surgically severed. Although the test subject would retain full muscular function, he could not see, hear, taste, smell, or feel anything. With no possible way to communicate or even sense the outside world, he was left completely alone with his thoughts. The scientists monitored him as he spoke aloud about his state of mind being jumbled, slurred sentences that he couldn't even hear. After four days, the man claimed to be hearing unintelligible voices in his head. Assuming that it was just the onset of psychosis, the scientists paid very little attention to his concerns. Two days later, the man cried that he could hear his dead wife speaking to him. Even more, that he could communicate back. The scientists were pretty intrigued, but weren't convinced. Not until the subject started naming dead relatives of the scientists. He reported personal information to the scientists that only their spouse or parents would have known. At that point, a good bit of the scientists left the study. After a week of conversing with the deceased through his thoughts, the subject became distressed, saying the voices were overwhelming. In every waking moment, his consciousness would be bombarded with hundreds of voices that refused to leave him alone. He frequently threw himself against a wall, trying to elicit some kind of pain response. He would be begging the scientists for sedatives, so he could just escape the voices by sleeping. The tactic worked for three days until he started having these severe night terrors. The subject repeatedly said that he could see and hear the deceased in his dreams. One day later, the subject began to scream and claw at his non-functioning eyes, hoping to sense something in the physical world. He said that the voices of the dead were now deafening and hostile, speaking of hell and the end of the world. At one point he yelled, no heaven, no forgiveness. For five hours straight, he continually begged to be killed, but the scientists were convinced that he was close to establishing that contact with God. After another day, the subject could no longer form coherent sentences. Seemingly mad, he started to bite off chunks of his own flesh. The scientists rushed into the test chamber and restrained him onto a table, just so he couldn't kill himself. After a few hours of being tied down, the subject halted his struggling and screaming. He stared blankly at the ceiling as teardrops started to stream down his face. For two weeks, the subject had to be manually rehydrated due to the constant crying. Eventually, he turned his head to one of the doctors. Despite his absolute blindness, he focused on eye contact with one of the scientists, and that was the first time in the study. He whispered, I've spoken to God, and he has abandoned us. And then all of his vital signs just stopped. There was no apparent cause of death either. A follow-up study, year 2000, Dr. G. F., Department of Neurology, hospital name withheld, San Francisco, California. A recent study of degenerative diseases which target the motor function in cognitive decline often leads to hallucinations of the deceased. The death of targeted cells and chemicals in the brain by this disease leads to a loss of smell, among other senses. The cause of the disease is unknown. Hallucinations present in 39.8% of all patients, falling into three categories. A sense of presence, a person. A sideways passage, commonly an animal, or illusions. Present in 25.5% of all patients. Isolated occurrence in 14.3%. Formed visual hallucinations present in 22.2% .2 of all patients. Isolated in 9.3%. And auditory hallucinations present in 9.7, isolated in 2.3%. The study is continuing in San Francisco, California, 2003 to present.
I would like to thank all of the lovely and amazing patrons currently listed on screen right now. Dan R, Neophyte Games, Chaos X, Mr. Swiston, Official Jerboa, JY Pyromancer, Hayden MH, Ethan A, Daniel H, Maximilian Charles P, Deneen H, Go Go Cute Puppy LLC, and Young Sykes. Guys, thank you all so much.